We arrived at uh, Roberto's house, whom we finally met. Sí, tenemos documentos. Mi pasaporte? Since we entered the house, really, of Roberto, it's been an adventure, right? With the Dalmatian and... We made it! Huh? Jose Maria was guiding us. Um, he's, he's so sweet, this guy. He seems to know so much. And I like his whole general attitude. I really enjoy Roberto also. First, the road was it's very rocky and very steep. It's kind of like a real adventure, you know, to come at night. But the smells were amazing and we climbed. We had left the capital in the afternoon for our mushroom expedition. We arrived late in the night at a village at the top of the mountain, where we were greeted by Mari, the leader of the small community of less than 200 people. Though we were tired, we took the time to socialize and get to know the family before settling in for the night. Quite an adventure so far. I'm enjoying where we are very much. For more than a year, my former roommate Alona insisted I meet her Guatemalan counterpart, Roberto, a mushroom expert, just like her. Thanks to my college friend, here I was, getting ready to learn about mushrooms in the mountains of Guatemala. We walked the next morning to the beautiful scenery of the Sierra de las Minas, home to Mesoamerica's largest cloud forest. Finally, we were back in nature. The day starting, first day in Zacapa. The area is known for its high concentration of marble, jade, and minerals. In 1990, the mountain range was declared a biosphere reserve to protect the diverse ecosystem of endemic species of flora and fauna. Marie shared with us about her community and her family. She opened her kitchen and her front porch to us, which would serve as our home base over the next couple of days. After breakfast, we were off to a new adventure. We're getting ready to leave for our first big expedition. We discovered the landscape of the Sierra de las Minas. Luscious green, flowing rivers, and cascading waterfalls. Waterfall right there. Glenn and I still had no idea where we were going. But it was time to hike our way through the fields and woods. That it's beautiful. It's nice. Not thinking much right now. Just Leaving it, all our senses were teased, with visuals ranging from rocky mountainsides to scented plants and jungle trees. But it wasn't long before our new friend Roberto led us to the object of his passion, mushrooms. But maybe this time we can find something. Hmm? We will. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Alactarius salmoneus. This is a rusula. Wow, look. Roberto looked at home in the woods, shining and vibrant in the proximity of mushrooms. It was inspiring. Same species, this is more mature. Mm, beautiful. The sophisticated and stressed men we had encountered in Guatemala City was no more in the mountains. Would you like to take it? Take it? Yes. It is one of the most beautiful mushrooms. Beautiful. Our experiences differed while mushroom hunting. For Glenn, it felt like an Easter egg hunt. I saw him transforming into a mushroom finding machine. For me, the thrill came from our group's reaction to the finding and from the unexpected colors of the mushrooms scattered throughout the landscape. The excitement about mushroom hunting could be read in Roberto's smile of latex and was contagious. The professor and him came out and there wasn't a question that couldn't be asked. It has insects on it, but otherwise we could eat it. Yeah. All were met with Roberto's patience and willingness to share his knowledge. Salmoneus. This is rare, only in, in Mexico and Central America. I enjoy this simplicity and availability during the entire expedition. 
He answered all our calls through the wood or through the fields when we stumbled upon just about any mushroom. Grilled? Mm -hmm. Grilled. It's perfect. Happy with much mushrooms. <laughs> oh, look at this! The chanterelle. Do you want to pick up the chanterelles? Yes! They are delicious. This yellowish trumpet-shaped mushroom was the same from my childhood. I recall the autumn mornings in the forest of France, picking these mushrooms with my family. So it is a good day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the group favorite of Aliona. Is it? Yeah, uh-huh. Maybe you can take the picture and send her. I was thankful to my friend Alona, wow. whose insistence had brought me to this extraordinary experience. Ah. From sharing an apartment in Haifa, Israel, we became friends. And I was now holding the object of the research I'd known her so passionate about. Characteristic of this species only the, of this species. When it is young, the aluminium is, uh, is red, but when it becomes more mature, it becomes yellow. Of same species, but when mature, it becomes uh, yellow, and when you touch it, it becomes blue or dark blue. It sometimes it's important to, to get the color. How the color changes. I found it so fascinating. From Israel to Guatemala, more pieces of my life's puzzle were coming together. Have you ever seen the Lactarius indigo? No. No? <gasps> the blue. Wow! When oh we first God. came across the a patch blue. of blue mushroom, I became ecstatic. These weren't flowers. They were mushrooms, bright That's blue the one mushrooms. That we're about this today, huh? Uh huh. Wow, look at this. And look. Wow, it's, it's gorgeous. Do you see the latex? And then blue? they were everywhere. Two for the moment. So, Lactarius indigos? Yes. The Lactarius indigo turned out to be the highlight of our mushroom expedition, also known as the indigo milk cap, blue milky or simply the blue milk mushroom, it can be found in some eastern mountains of North America and East Asia. And they only grow in specific patches no. of pine yeah, forest yeah. in Mexico and Guatemala. There's lots of blue ones here. Wow, they found some big blue ones. They are gorgeous. Does it ever stop being exciting with the blue ones? Never, <laughs> <laughs> never. I love to be excited with indigo. I've always loved walking bridges. And even when they scare me, their sight is always a delight. That one felt like it would be a breeze to cross. And I engaged on it without any hesitation until I came across wider and wider spade slats. And I wondered if my leg would allow such a spread or if a point would come, I would have to jump. Zil made his brave crossing. And for this dog, water is nothing more than something to quench his thirst. Swimming is the last option he would ever choose. But he has to follow Glenn. And so he does. Good doggy! Oh my goodness! You made it! Oh, yo, yo! Our guide, José Maria, appeared a quiet but powerful character. Clever, knowledgeable and humble, with a presence expressed through direct eye contact mm -hmm. and a distinct aura inspiring respect. In addition to being a talented photographer and a tour guide with great driving skills even in harsh and unpredictable terrain, he displayed a solid knowledge of the geography of Guatemala and of the surrounding countries. He can identify a large variety of mushrooms and wildlife. Yes, it was here. We hadn't noticed it. 
this case, these are edible. Here, the common name for these is anacate. Wow! Yes, the Mayans use that for steely and for writing books. Jose, what is this? He shared his interest in history and an ever-growing knowledge of the Mayan culture. And the Mayans. Practically, their knowledge of God was from nature. They have a sort of spiritual relationship with these species. Jose appealed sensitive, deep, and with a solid understanding of psychology. I was intrigued by what I perceived as a sincere humility. What I have today is what matters. Yesterday, well, that's already passed. And tomorrow, I don't know if... We are working in a, in a project to analyze the, their DNA to confirm the genus because many mushrooms in this country are endemic. The one we get there could be an endemic species because only grows in Sierra de las Minas. You can find it in other places of Guatemala. So it's, it's unique. And how we know that it is endemic experience. Mm -hmm. The DNA confirms what we were expecting or sometimes more surprises. Sometimes you say, ah, okay, it's the same species, but when you analyze it, your species is here, uh, the others are very distant. For example, the Lactarius deliciosus from Europe is there. The Lactarius deliciosus from the United States is here, and the Guatemalan is here. And in Guatemala, I had to finish that, but I want to call the, the most common species Lactarius neo deliciosus for calling or recalling the, the neotropics and be a new deliciosus. This is a paradise for mushrooms in the world. We have at least mm, more than 100 species that are eaten by local people. And if you go to Honduras and El Salvador, the number decreases oh, really? abruptly. Uh -huh. And how did your interest first came come for, for mushrooms? I got interested in the mushrooms when I was in the university because I was, yeah. in, I was looking for new edible things. I was thinking in uh, insects, but at the end, no, insects, no, it's not good, no. no. The smell, the flavors, no. <laughs> and there are very few mycologists. Ah, oh, okay, this, it sounds good. And I fall in love with mushrooms. You were in your 20s? Yes, yes. I was in my 20s. Now don't ask my age. I'm not asking. <laughs> <laughs> For three days, we hiked many miles in the region. Though it was beautiful, it wasn't without difficulties. For one, bug bites seemed inevitable. No matter how much we prepared for it, it was never enough. They would bugs. still get to us. Bugs and ants. <laughs> on our skin, on our clothes, in our bags. We can't get them out. The terrain could be very steep and most of the ground was saturated with water and slick leaves. In these parts, plants can be something to fear. They are poison oaks and ivy. Good with what I'm doing right now. Well, that one is less fun. It's uh, full of stones and biting ants, and they bite, like firing. With bites that burn like flaming needles. Even after they're gone, they beat the hell out of me everywhere. I just didn't whine. Every section of wood seems to have its own brand of biting insect. At the end of each day, we compared our battle wounds. Even Zil couldn't escape the wrath of these biters. In most of these areas, spiders were everywhere. Their webs attach from branch to branch, and if you aren't careful, you will walk straight into them. Glenn seemed to be a web magnet. Spiders. Uh -oh. It's the third spider. Ah, straight to my face. How do you feel? 
<laughs> you look like hell. <laughs> well, what do you expect for a white boy? Ah! I thought you were from Oaxaca. That's Far why. North. We saw a few snakes in the bushes. Roberto and I share the same fear of these glittering serpents. Yo malas experiencias con las culebras. De chiquito se metió una en la bota. But Glenn, always looking for them, found a partner in Jose Maria. They seek them out together through the expedition. A half meter, the most. Half meter. And finally, they found one. Contils are some of the most dangerous snakes in Mesoamerica. It's peligroso. <laughs> As they are common, and their powerful venom causes numerous deaths each year. <laughs> I'm going to release it now. I'll throw it away. Most locals kill these snakes on sight, but we try to preserve any lives that we can, as they are all part of the larger ecosystem. This? This is luck. We've been waiting for this. Doctor, we found one of those blue ones we've been looking for. So we're rushing to Jose because he found something that you say is important? Okay. Once, we found one on the other side. Once, a small one. And we never saw it again. <gasps> yes, it is. This is a new species of entoloma. It's only reported in New Zealand, I think Australia, and maybe Japan. It's a gorgeous mushroom. Huh? Mm -hmm. blue, blue mushrooms are not common in nature. But here they seem to be. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. found the right place. Thank you, Glenn. You're welcome. So is that the sixth one? Yeah, and the biggest. The yeah, largest. Yeah. This is the largest. Because the those before were this size. We should study the, if there is a possible symbiosis with these plants. Leguminosi is the family of that, that plant. These plants produce edible mushrooms. <sighs> I'm happy. <laughs> Un otro? Si! Sí. De los mismos. Same, but a patch of them. This small blue species of Entoloma was the main reason for this expedition. They had only encountered this species once before. But on this day, we collected a total of nine specimens, all of which were found within a 100 meter radius on a single hillside. Completely mature. The day provided an array of juvenile and mature fruit bodies to study with characteristics that may make it not just a new species, but a new genus. Roberto is now awaiting DNA results for this incredible new mushroom, and we can't wait to hear the results. You said it could be a new genus? Could be. For this form, it could be an entoloma, perfectly. But with this, and the color of the spores, it's exciting, huh? New, new genes? Wow! You realize? The dream of every scientific mycologist. This is a treasure. This is the treasure we came for. Thank you. One of the treasures. One of the treasures. But the day never ends with the last of foraging, even with such remarkable finds. Blue, baby blue. We have to describe them after the, the field trip. Back from the field, it is time to sort the mushrooms. Are you sorting the mushrooms? So you're looking at them, can we come in? Yes. This step cannot be postponed, for decay and rot would quickly set in. I love in. this part. We have the blue one, that are totally new, so it's better to keep them separated. Mushrooms are distinguished by their stem, cap and gills, which are located underneath the cap and their texture, size, proportions, and colors are all considered for more accuracy, as two mushrooms looking alike aren't necessarily equal, and the difference could lie in edibility versus toxicity. This year's season wasn't as good as previous ones. Two years ago, in these same days, 
We collected so many. Lots. Lots. The, larger, the largest collection I made in my life. Changing climate and the conversion of forests to agricultural lands are responsible for the dwindling availability of mushrooms. For most research excursions, Roberto invests his own money because public funding is difficult to attain. The most important part now for research on mushrooms collaboration with institutions in developed countries. Most universities and private organizations find mycology to be of lesser priority on the funding circuit. Roberto hopes this will soon change. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and, um, and it's very impressive, actually, how we managed to sort these things together. 16 genus of Boletales, 7, 8 species of Lactarius. Once sorting is done, each mushroom is meticulously described, including its exact color. There are approximately 14,000 known types of mushrooms, making the description process critical, particularly in the case of new and rare species. I could say that this mushroom has this color, but I have to know that it has a green color. And I have to look for the green color. For example, here, look how it becomes green. Because indigo, when you cut it, it becomes green. Maybe they have similar or the same pigment. Recently, the fields of medicine, agriculture, environment and textiles have seen advancements thanks to fungi, with pioneering research being placed into alternative fuels and even building materials. Many mushrooms provide essential vitamins, proteins and fibers among other nutrients, and they have been consumed for generations by native communities. Others possess healing and medicinal properties, some of which have been known for thousands of years. But today, much of this knowledge has been lost as a consequence of urbanization and deforestation. We heard first-hand testimonies about the loss of trees and the disappearance of mushrooms from our Guatemalan friends as they catalog their findings. After each night of sorting and describing, the mushrooms need to be sliced and dehydrated for 8 to 12 hours. I will use one of these to obtain the DNA for analysis in the US. Once dry, I put them into plastic bags. I assign a, a number and then they go to the collection, mycological collection of Guatemala, and that's it. After our last day of mushroom hunting near the village, we went for a beer. Jose stopped the car by a small tienda amidst tropical plants and trees. We sat on the porch around a small wooden table, realizing we were on Walter's family property. Walter, 20 years old, introduced us to his young wife, Rosie, 17. They themselves are parents to a plump nine months old Genesis, who observed all of us with the greatest seriousness. Parenting at such a young age is common in rural Guatemala. In the hour we spent there, Jose engaged in a deep conversation with Rosie about difficulties encountered by the poorest families of the region. <laughs> often facing alcoholism, family separation, with many men attempting to emigrate to the U.S. to find work. They both went on to discuss the cultural shock and loss of values that often ensued their move when they managed to reach their destination. Walter's father offered us freshly cut sugar cane to taste, as well as a dozen of sticks to take with us. Mm -hmm. My teeth aren't helping with sugar cane. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And it reminds me of my island. Zil wandered around, attracting other dogs' curiosity. Zil, Zil, get in. Go. Go. 
I enjoyed this break amidst yet another humble Guatemalan family before heading back to home base for our final meal on this side of the mountain. And we're about to leave this incredible place. <laughs> Goodbye to Marie, Christian. We said our goodbyes and we were back on the bumpy road. But this time, the beautiful descent of the mountain was in plain light. All went nicely until we were stopped at the final gate of the natural reserve. The guard had been expecting us and very formally asked to verify all of our IDs, taking photos of everything and questioning us with every step. When we inquired about the reason for this peculiar treatment, we were told that our group had been reported flying a drone in the area. This did not happen, but we recalled a strange encounter from two days before while mushroom hunting. Getting out of the woods back onto a dirt road, a vehicle approached on an aeropath. To our great surprise, the driver got out and addressed Roberto by his full name, title and university affiliation. Something felt uneasy. I tried to understand the reason for this man's presence in the middle of nowhere. At the same moment, we encountered two locals repairing a washed-out section of the road, and we consulted with them about flying the drone. They kindly advised us not to fly it because of privacy concerns in the area, so we didn't. This was the first and only time that anyone was aware of our drone. After about 15 minutes of being questioned at this gate, we were on our way down the mountain again, with stunning views of the valley below. It's the amazing waterfall that is down and the amazing mountains that are up. So we just made a little quick stop on the way. Glenn is now putting the GoPro. Night fell quickly as we headed up the adjacent mountain toward our new camp. It was a windy and narrow one-lane dirt road, muddy and slick from the relentless rain of the season. After many hours of driving, we arrived at our new location. A mission-style home amongst the trees in the cloud forest. This was the second home of Roberto's friend, who generously welcomes researchers who come to study in the area. I thought it was a statue, it's not. It was there all day. Is it a turtle? It's a toad. A toad. A toad? And then I was like, oh, it's one in stone. But it just moved. Hey, friend. <laughs> It took a while to get settled in. With our things dry from the rain, we could then turn our attention to preparing the first meal from our bounty of edible mushrooms. There is something quite remarkable that happens when you finally get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Over the fire of the wood stove, we cooked freshly picked chanterelle with farm fresh eggs, local tortillas, beans and wine. For this group, the forage comes in the name of science. But in Guatemala, not all are so fortunate. For many, knowledge of edible plants and mushrooms is simply a necessity for survival, with little means to attain other forms of nutrition. For others, it can be a rite of passage, passed down through generations for thousands of years. We talked through the night and celebrated our accomplishments as the rain clashed on the ceramic roof tiles above. We counted our blessings, as this would be our home base for the following rainy nights. We left for a hunt in our new location in the early morning. The higher altitude revealed different terrain, a more saturated and muddy ground. 
but now with towering pines and oaks with grassy hills. Coming down a hill, we pass the marble extraction area. And we learn that Walter also works here, polishing the beautiful Guatemala green marble that comes from the area. He polished those, he polished those himself. Para pisos o baños, ¿eh? Or floors or bathrooms. We faced some of the roughest roads while searching for mushrooms out here. But everything with this group is a team effort. And obstacles are met with solutions. Even when needing to stop and build up sections of roads washed out by the rainstorms. Of course, it helps that everyone has knowledge and experience in the area. These couple days were made of stop-and-go driving, stepping out to pick up mushrooms we spotted as we went on, exploring farther and farther into the forest. On one of these days, I let the boys do their thing, while I stayed behind and took some time to myself. So, as I took a break from mushroom hunting and hiking through the forest, someone decided that he would stay in the dry and found his way next to the sugar cane. Oh my goodness, there is too much mud. Okay, okay then. I'm looking for mushroom. We find horses. Bring in the forest. Quick change. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wow! Moluscos del Guillo, huh? Si. Oh, déjalo. Mm -hmm. Wow! Y como lo vi! We got stuck. This is not the Muscaria. I think it is the Amanita persicina, also hallucinogenic. And my theory is that this is the species that the Mayan use for sacrifices, not the Muscaria, because Muscaria only grows with pines. In Mexico, in the Mayan area, there are no pines. But in Guatemala, we have the Caribbean pine in Poptum and there grows this species. Very possible that this is the species that the Mayan ate for the sacrifices. So this is probably the oldest... It's the same, yeah, uh-huh. And is that one also? It's I old, see it's it old, has... uh-huh. With the rain, Amanitas lost the patches. Patches, no, los patches. Uh. Patches. See, in English, un patches. For me, this journey is not about adventure or intrigue. It is about healing. And the truth is, I have been manifesting this expedition for more than two years. The thing that would bring light to my dark night of the soul. To learn about plants, mushrooms and wildlife to be healed by nature as I immerse myself in it. And though I was exactly where I wanted to be, learning the things I had longed for, I had seen my involvement wane over the course of the expedition. It's been a few weeks since we returned, and in hindsight, I can see the impact and progression in my mental and emotional state. But I'm also aware that it may not last. I wonder how much my extraordinary life helps me. Like in the story of the alchemist, I do believe that the answer is in us. I believe that I can live an extraordinary life inside a very ordinary life. 
I may however find it difficult to expose myself in such vulnerable writing. But maybe within the reflection is my therapy, taking me one step closer to healing. For us, this was just a week-long expedition, immersing ourselves into the world of mushroom. Just one short week out of our 15 months on the road. I still struggle with depression, and all I can hope for is that with each day, life feels more meaningful. At the time of publishing this video, we're on our way to Puerto Rico, where we will check up on Glenn's house after the hurricane season. From there, we will spend three months editing more documentaries for release and connect with family and friends before getting back on the road towards Argentina. Guatemala has been inspiring and beautiful, full of ancient and modern culture, incredible people and incredible stories. We will soon share more of these stories with you as we currently have 36 one-hour-long episodes in production. Each of these videos are the culmination of hundreds of hours of work and will be available in English, Spanish and French. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please consider helping us by contributing to our GoFundMe or Patreon campaigns. Thank you and have a meaningful awakening.